Welcome to the Pikeville City Manager's Report. I'm your host, Jill Fraley Dotson. As always, along with Pikeville City Manager Donovan Blackburn, the day that we come together to discuss all the wonderful and great things going on in and around our city. Donovan, good day to you. Good day, Jill. It is uh, the morning that we're uh, recording now. It's a little snowy outside, no different than it's been for the past couple of weeks. But we are going to talk about a lot of great things coming when the snow is supposed to stop and some things going on this coming weekend and next weekend. So let's get right to it. Now, we talked last time when we were together about the hiring of some new personnel for the city and for the Expo Center. Those people are now in place. I want you to introduce uh, Esley Pigman and then we'll talk about John Mazzola. Well, absolutely. Um, you know, Jill, the commission, and, uh, and I think we briefly touched on this during the last show, is the commission has challenged me uh, to look at what the city needs to do as part of our comprehensive plan, as part of our planning stage, to refocus in a sense of, of trying to get, and I use, I mean, I came from business, and so I'm going to use some of the terms I'm used to, but the best ROI, return on investment um, for the dollars that are being spent. So, you know, as I, I know I mentioned during the last show, you know, during the SOAR conference, there were certain sectors that uh, the SOAR initiative kind of kicked off that said that we really need to concentrate. Industry is one of them for certain, and, and that's really the realm that I'm concentrating on. And then uh, tourism is another piece of this. So during the last meeting, we uh, introduced um, our two new positions, uh, our executive director, Larry McGoy, um, and he's over tourism and, and uh, so he's the executive director, just to get the title straight, the executive director of tourism and events. And then we had Justin Prater, who is the director of tourism. So Justin reports to Larry. Um, and then uh, Esley is the, our new hire that he will actually start this Monday. Um, uh, he is the director of events. So you got a director of tourism, a director of events, and then an executive director. And there's very specific um, responsibilities that each mem member of this new staff will, uh, will concentrate on. Uh, what we basically did was is, is um, just to uh, kind of get a feel uh, for where we're heading, <clears throat> we took certain positions with the city that um, and, and, and we'll talk about that we are right on cue. You, you hear are. the background noise. <laughs> <Genuinely>. <laughs> Um, we have taken positions that were with the city and through nutrition, um, we, we kind of cut those positions out because they're no longer, I won't say they're not needed, we just found other resources to be able to pursue to be able to address those needs. For example, Sean Cochran took over the position of the operations director for the city. So uh, we, with him being able to take care of projects, um, that position was no longer needed. Um, we combine Main Street with the Artisan Center, uh, so that was a position that we 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 the uh, changed the focus towards, uh, and our sounds dying down a little bit. Just a little bit. Kind of hard to concentrate sometimes. <laughs> uh, but in, in in doing away with those positions, we didn't create any additional payroll. What we were able to do is just to refocus and create different positions so that we can focus in different areas. Tourism is a tremendous opportunity. It's a, it's a way to open up a whole different sector of our economy. Uh, as we have talked about, the good Lord's gave us some absolutely beautiful mountains and hills and a lot of great natural resources, and we need to take advantage of those um, in a way of creating jobs and opportunities. And at a time where jobs are so important to the area and other service areas, it is, it is really a necessity for us to really look at ways to branch out. Um, this new position is one of them um, because what we've been able to concentrate on is tourism attractions. So when you look at, when I, and when we talk about attractions, and that's really what the director of tourism will take care of, you're looking at things like the horse trail, uh, the riding trail, um, thing, you know, attractions to where you're showing up for them and there's something tangible you touch, ride, do. So that's more of what um, Justin will be concentrating on, along with the city's website, um, tourism website, I should say. And you know, right now, you know, we've got over 18,000 followers on, on our tourism, so tourism, there is a tremendous interest in some of the things that, uh, and some of the directions that we are heading in. So, and then you also have events. Events are, again, things like uh, 5K runs, um, Nightmare of Maine, um, you know, um, the different uh, I mean, Hibley days, the different things that are going on in the parks uh, at different times. So because we've grown into so much so quickly so fast, we've had a hard time getting our hands around trying to be everything to everyone. So what we've done is we've kind of divided those areas off of, in different responsibilities. We're trying to retool them to create something as simple as, you know, signage. Um, Muscle on Main, when we have that event, 
uh, streets are closed down and there's sometimes a little confusion as of to how the traffic flow is. So again, having checklists of creating signage, of telling people where, where to go, how to park, how to, to maneuver, those are key impone, components along with the actual event themselves. So we this will give us the opportunity of really uh, keying in on some key facets of the business. And then the other thing that we're really doing is concentrating on what is what needs to be the core business because one of the key things is you you know and, and I hope the public understands this is that we certainly can't be everything to everyone at times. Um, so you know when you do um, one event, then what happens typically is you get five other organizations that may come to you and say I want to duplicate that event, and we just simply don't have the personnel or the time or the resources to always do that. So what we're tr really truly trying to do is to home in on the events that are true community events that will bring out the crowd because ultimately what we want is is we want our businesses filled uh, to create other service demands, other opportunities, and give it a re reason for people not only to travel here, but also people to stay home so that they don't have to go to other parts of the country to have a good time. They can do that in their own backyard. Well, you touched on a great thing with the, with the hire of Esley Pigman because you said it best, we've grown so much, so fast, and with so many different opportunities, all of the different aspects of tourism and events and things, they really need that one person to hone in on those particular activities, like you said with Muscle on Main and downtown events and the festivals, then you have you know, the river trails, and then you have the Facebook pages and websites and things like that. Not one person can be, as you've said best, everything to everybody, so we've got to find a way to have a, a one person dedicated to certain amount of things to make it all grow better because we're going to continue to grow. It's, it's just a, it's a simple fact. So what better way than to have all of these people in place? And I've had the opportunity to meet, to meet a couple of them, had them on the radio shows and just wonderful Larry McGoy, my goodness, and Justin, a young visionary, has a lot of uh, excitement and enthusiasm behind what he's doing. And Larry, just very attention to detail oriented person. And I'm sure that Mr. Pigman is no different. Well, and that's, you know, part of, uh, you know, we had a great interview pool. Uh, we looked at none of those that uh, that applied for the position, but also went up above and beyond that and looked for people that had other uh, qualities and traits that may have an interest in, in this in this field. Um, and that's a good point because Larry, uh, for example, and and I know you've had him on the show or the radio show, and and uh, actually I'd planned on having him on this week, and we've got so much going on right now, it wasn't a good Don't time. Get him. Uh, but probably our next show, we may bring them on for the public to be able to uh, to meet them. But you know, Larry, his expertise um, in organization um, comes from his background in the military. He has served his country for over 20 some years. So his recent post was in Afghanistan. Uh, he was over all branches of the military, their uh, 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 armor personnel, uh, all their vehicles and such. Um, he has hosted major events uh, where he has been over the planning of, for example, a, a military ball. Um, and I could go on and on and on. But you know, also look at, at his specialties and what he was trained in with the military. Uh, he's got a very extensive background. Um, he's, and I laugh because he's also good with a hammer. He's a good contractor too. And that's been a running joke because we do so much with the city. Everybody has to be everything to everyone. <laughs> well, that's right. And I'll tell you something else I, I realized about him in our conversation that we had um, when he was on the show, he's a car enthusiast. Yes. Loves, loves uh, classic cars. And of course, <clears> that ties right into when we do Muscle on Main and our different car events this year. So I would say that a lot of those activities will be picked up just a touch. Well, he has, and I, I'm thinking it's a Mustang of 60 some, I think. Um, I haven't talked to him in detail about it. Just found this out this past week. I knew he was a car enthusiast, but uh, he also has a, 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 uh, an older car that you know he's excited about. Um, they, you know, we've got a great relationship with the uh, Good Old Boys Car Club. I mean, this is a wonderful organization that uh, we co-host basically Muscle on Main with and for. A uh, great bunch of car enthusiasts, great bunch of guys that loves their community, and and they want the opportunity to bring it out their baby as as uh, as it's been portrayed. Um, and and so you've got somebody now in a position that that it not only can organize an event but also is a car lover himself. So they had their meeting, I think it was uh, day before yesterday, the Good Old Boys Car Club, and they were introduced to Larry. I've had nothing but positive uh, feedback, and they were really exci very excited about his background and, and his love for, for cars, and, and that he's also a car enthusiast by owning a vehicle. So, you know, a lot of those skills that, that Larry brings to the table is gonna be absolutely wonderful for our growth, um, because that was a key component, Jill, is that when we look at whether it's Muscle on Main, whether it's the arm drop drag racing, whether, you know, and I can go on and on because we have some other great things planned. 
Um, and I'm telling you, if, if, if everything comes to fruition that we're working on right now, I'm telling you, hold on to yourselves because our community from the standpoint of tourism is going to change drastically. Uh, there are some wonderful projects out there right now that if, again, we're, we're knee deep in trying to work out details and, and hopefully some things can be announced over the next couple of months. Some of it was announced in, in the, the uh, local paper, News Express, this week, but that's only a very small piece of what we're working on. Um, but having that expertise, uh, somebody like a Larry, is very important to our growth. Uh, and then you say yourself, um, Justin is, um, you know, he's a recent UPIKE graduate, uh, won the Young Entrepreneurship Contest that they had, um, understands the internet, uh, very, very excitable, very energetic. Um, you know, you give him up in the short couple of weeks that he's been with us, you give him a project and he's I mean, just all over it and, uh, you know, just really enthused. But it's somebody also that really enjoys, uh, he loves his community, grew up on Island Creek, um, moved as soon as we offered him the position before he even started. He wanted to move into town, so he found an apartment downtown. So, I mean, the kids got a lot going on and, and will do a wonderful job. Um, and, and his focus as director of, of, of tourism will be more on the river trails, the horse trails, uh, the riding trails, the trail type um, events that we have. Larry is going to take over Muscle on Main and the Arm Drop, um, <clears throat> and then uh, Easy, which is what we call them, mm -hmm. um, will take over. Like I said, a lot of the festivals and, and events. So it's a, it's a great it's a great group. And then Sean Cochran will be is their direct supervisor, uh, and Sean reports uh, obviously to me. But uh, so there's a lot of initiative, a lot of excitement. Um, as Lee is, and, and we'll bring him on whenever he, maybe that way we can have them all three here at the same time, tell you his background. But, um, you know, the, the, the wonderful thing about uh, Esley is, is he's from over the Knott County area. Uh, this, most people know the sportsplex over there. Right. Uh, he manages, where he currently is, is he managed the sportsplex. Um, so he's leaving that job. Uh, his uh, girlfriend um, is um, being relocated here for a job, so he was looking for something closer to, to be with her. Um, and their family, and um, so his background uh, has had a background in tourism uh, with Knott County, and, and uh, uh, so he understands government's role. He's had, you know, has operated a, a multi-million dollar complex, um, and uh, so he comes here with a lot of experience and, and, and a lot of great background as well. So really excited to get these three guys on board. Uh, we'll bring a lot to the community. Um, and of course, we've got some others that are coming on board also. We do. Nice transition there. John yeah. Mazzola yeah. now I'm is... I'm learning from you, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> he is now the director of the Expo Center, and certainly that was a long, long process to go through. Uh, but right. trying to find the exact person and the right fit takes a little bit of extra time, but he is now in place, and I know is excited about that new position as well. Well, absolutely. Uh, John was in the market uh, this week. Um, he'll, his first official day will be this coming Monday. Um, he, again, John's just a guy that I think is going to fit into our community extremely well. He knows the business. He has been in every type of venue that you can imagine, and everywhere from uh, South Carolina to Florida to, uh, to New York, um, uh, Upper New York. Um, and so, I mean, he just, he, has, he just has a lot of experience. But what he is, and what really caught my eye, is he's a small, he's a small town guy. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the venues that he's operated is, was in r rural communities, something like ours. You know, some venues bigger, some venues smaller. Um, and though he has vast experience, I know he had a lot of exposure in the market, um, a lot of in both the uh, paper and the medical leader, uh, the newspaper and the medical or the News Express. But um, <clears throat> I think really the, what the community is going to see is a, just a just a good old uh, just a good old fella, and yeah. uh, it's going to really relate to. Um, but the ideals he has for the Expo Center is just absolutely, I mean, we, you know, when we did the search, and this is a very uh, key issue, so I appreciate you kind of stepping into it, is that just like the things that we're doing with tourism, um, we, we want the same outlook with the Expo Center. And again, it's something that the Commission is just absolutely passionate about. Um, you know, we've had this discussion many, many times, Jill, but I'm going to say it again. And I've been with the city 10 years now. And the, what the city looked like 10 years ago compared to what it looks like today is night and day. The events, the attractions, the opportunities, even in a downturn of you know, economic climate, the city has continued to grow and prosper. And it's because of the hard work and the vision 
of this commission that we have that, that believes in the mission, believes in the people, and has done a wonderful job. And it's my great pr privilege to work with guys that are such great visionaries, but more important, they find a way to, to not to say no, but a way to make it work. And they do it in such a way that they are um, fulfilling their fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayers and making sure that the dollars that inv are invested have a great return on not only monetarily, but also on quality of life. So this is another way with the Expo Center that they can do that. It wasn't, you know, when they saved, stepped in and was able to save the Expo Center uh, because as you know, the state wasn't funding it and it wasn't, you know, they had a great board uh, led by Charles Baird was, you know, he was doing everything he possibly could to make this thing work. And, uh, but, you know, there was just no funds available. So, you know, the commission saw the vision. Uh, they stepped in to, 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 to save it from a financial ruin. And in doing so, it, it, when you look at all the events that are coming up, there, has, there is a, a change. And that's the easiest way I can say. You know, Steve was a great guy, good friend, right, right person for, at the right time. Um, he has moved on. So what we have done is I've had many, many conversations. Greg Olson, who is the, uh, uh, the regional vice president for SMG, um, he and I, for the last four or five months now, have had numerous meetings. Uh, several discussions about where we want to see the Expo Center going. Um, you've got Les Crook, um, who has uh, been the interim manager for the past several months, uh, has done a wonderful job with the bookings. We've, both, we've, we've moved our focus a little bit uh, as of to what type of events that we want to, to uh, cover, which we'll have some to cover here in a little bit. Uh, but we're also challenging other aspects of the, of the venue that I think over the next several months more, more and more will come out. Uh, because looking at, you know, again, what is our return um, on the ballrooms? What can we do to create diff additional events? How can we use the concourse, you know, differently? Um, even going as far as looking at, you know, can we take some of the food and, and uh, uh, stations and, and maybe convert them to um, opportunities for other you know, services to come in, you know, because I've seen this in other places. You go to Rupp and you see Dunkin' Donuts in, their, in Rupp Arena, uh, along with other uh, venues. So those are some of the things that we're going to be continually challenging and seeing how we, we can make it not only better, but also give a greater return. So a lot of, there's a lot of thought out there, a lot of, a lot of changes that are going to take place, and, and I'm just really excited. And we will have all of the gentlemen that we spoke at spoke about on the show in the coming weeks so we can introduce them officially to the public and, and get their thoughts too. It's, yes. uh, it's going to be fun. Um, one of the things you know that we have continuously talked about is the commercial air service project and it's getting very very close to the launch date or launch of the first flight I should say. It, it is and there is um, there is a lot on the no pun intended of the horizon from the standpoint of what's going on with commercial air. Um, there's been a lot in the we talked about it recently a lot in the press, there's been a lot in the, uh, the online forum discussions. Um, um, it's come under criticism because, um, you know, once it's announced and there's nothing going on and then people say, you know, what's happening? And so people tend to talk and, and to stir. Um, so we've, we've had a lot of uh, members of the media reach out and ask, where are you with this and where are you with that? And as I mentioned during a previous show, and I'll say it again, our, the intent for the, uh, the partners at the table, uh, the chamber, the airport board, and the city was to create a provider now, or, or to, to create a model, I should say, that would work in this market, Jill. And it very co complex, you know, and again, nowhere across our entire U.S. has been able to put a model together like this is. Um, there was, we were looking at another model that we were talking about a couple of months ago uh, with, uh, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the company, I just drew a blank, my apologies. But um, there was some recent uh, media or news that that um, hub actually went under. So instead of going to Cleveland, which using a different provider, which is what our original intent was, we thought this was a much better and safer and secure way to go. Um, it was announced this week that if we had went that way, we would have been out of business because Cleveland actually shut their hubs down to these, this provider and it's just, it wasn't because these type of services are not working versus the model that we chose. So th this has a lot of components in it that we believe will work if, if just 10% of the market will invest 
in using the service. Now, with that said, our in, what we had to do was to set up and create the provider, create the service, create all the different components, and I, I could sit here for two hours and talk about all the mechanics that went into this. But what I want the the general public to understand is, is this isn't as simple as just the airport board or the city or the chamber to sit down and make something this work. There is so many moving parts to this that the public not only has to be patient, but they need to understand what all it took to bring something like this to fruition. Um, understanding you've got federal agencies such as the FAA, uh, you've got uh, you know charter, you've got uh, um, uh, I'm, 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 again, I'm, I'm all over the board on this thing because there's just so many pieces to it, but uh, corporate flight management charter, you've got uh, Kenny Rambo with the marketing company, you've got the chamber of the city, uh, you've got, uh, again, the FAA, um, you've got, and there's many more pieces that I'm, I'm not covering because once you get, for example, there's been some discussion with the baggage. So it's not only working, you also have got the airport in, uh, in Nashville that you have to deal with. You've got all the different airlines that you have to deal with, creating interlocal agreements so that um, um, so that baggage can be handled in a certain way. Um, you've got to set up the agreement uh, for uh, TSA, and of course that's another federal agency. Um, there, the uh, provider itself had to get a new certification which had to go through the federal government. That was done and approved last week. So there's just so many balls in the air for all this to come to play that literally you've got three companies that every single day is doing that but focusing on getting to the finish line. They have conquered and crossed so many goal lines to make this work, it is unbelievable. So our intent, or, or the way that this structure went is, is that we had a first work the deal contract to say, okay, this is what we're offering, but you can't put the cart before the horse. The uh, FAA can't certify somebody for a service that they're not providing the service yet. So they have to be able to provide the service before they can go over and and, and ask for the application. Uh, the TSA cannot put together a security plan unless they know that you're actually coming. You know, you don't just put a, submit a fictitious application and say, we're thinking about this. How about going through all the red tape? Um, you have to have a contract before that you can do it. So again, it's all processes. All that process is going through. Um, it's in a great position uh, for launch. Um, so what's happened, to put all the, a bow on all this, there's been so many false, I won't say false statements, misunderstandings and statements made out there without understanding the whole story. For example, um, the chairman of the board has been quoted several times on different aspects of, of, of statements that he has made or that the board has made in regard to service. But what the public needs to understand is, is that he's commenting only on his piece of the pie. There's another 50 pieces of the pie there. So what and him saying something like that TSA, we don't have a security plan for TSA, doesn't mean that we, there's not a security plan for TSA. The security plan is with TSA. Once TSA approves the security plan, then it comes to his piece, then it becomes his piece of the pie to enact. So there's just a lot of things out there that, that are misunderstood. So because of all this, the point that I'm getting to is this is a, such an important uh, aspect for our community for growth. Uh, it's a great, unbelievable project that was supported by both federal, state, the community. If you, you know, at the grant, uh, ribbon cutting, look at the amount of people that showed up that's really eager to see this thing take off. Um, the plane is being painted as we're, as we're talking. They're putting the striping and all this stuff on. Um, ticket sales um, will, could not happen. And there's been some question out there, well, why haven't you done your ticket sales yet? Um, Again, all part of the planning is you can't put the ticket sales until you get the certification through the federal government. That didn't come through until last week. So a lot of different hoops you have to jump through to get to that point. It's all coming is the point. So what happened is we ended up on a conference call uh, about a week or so ago, and there was a lot of questions coming from the media. And so what public charters um, and the, sh the stakeholders agreed to and said this would be a great, you know, our since the public, this is the public service, and since we believe in total transparency, um, have, and I have answered any question that's ever been asked of me in regard to this, um, what we've done is, is Public Charters has sent out an invitation yesterday uh, to the press. So on next Wednesday, I think it's the 13th, the 12th, 13th, I can't remember the date. It's next Wednesday, though. The um, uh, corporate flight management in conjunction with Public Charters will be running a plane here 
they're doing a test flight basically. <clears throat> they will be coming here and picking up the press corps. Uh, we have invited Pike TV, um, the, uh, w, uh, the uh, EKB, uh, we've invited the News Express, WYMT, uh, Medical Leader, um, all to board the plane and to fly to Nashville to see the operation to walk through the airport, to see where the ticket counter is going to be, to see where the gate's going to be. In the film, we've got permission to film, um, to take pictures, and for the media to ask any and all questions that they want at that time. So that everything can be laid out before the public as of to what this service is going to mean versus seeing it in snippets or reading about it on a Facebook posting where somebody may not understand the full aspects of what's going on. So in the name of transparency, um, they all the corporations are going to be there be available they're going to take them to their maintenance garage they're going to take them through corporate flight management they're going to see the, the plane they're going to take them to the airport uh, to let them see as i mentioned i think in the last show uh corporate flight management and charter just signed an agreement with american airline to where the, i think it was american airline um i don't, I don't want to say anything out there because again when i talk about the pieces of the pie those are things that sometimes that we say that the others of us may say as we understand them, but it may not be exactly tr to the point because we're not the ones dealing with it directly. So, um, but we're going to use their ticket counter. There's an interlocal agreement that's already been signed. Um, the baggage deal that's been in out there has been the outgoing baggage has been 100% taken care of. That that obstacle has been removed. It's the incoming baggage that they're trying to get the interlocal signed, but they've got three different methods um, that they can address, and they feel like they'll have a final result uh, of that by the end of hopefully next week or uh, the end of this week I'm sorry so that when everybody when they show up Wednesday they'll be able to show people how um, a sterile sterile environment will work how their baggage will be handled where the ticket counter will be how the designated um, gate uh, will, will be all that will be disclosed so that all these little rumors out there that are floating around can all be um, explained in full and uh, completely um, brought forward to the public so that the public understands what's going on. Because there's been a, Jill, I'm telling you, there's been a lot of hard work um, to make this program happen. And, you know, this is a, not only a milestone for the community, but the, again, this is something that no other community has done in this format. We have literally written a whole new model to make it work for our community. And I'm very proud of that fact that we've got a lot of people that's really worked hard on this. I do have to ask sure. the, the question that everybody does want to know, are we still going to have that the, the first flight day, is it still intact, beginning of March? All that, again, well, I don't want to answer that question okay. because it may be pushed back a couple of weeks. Okay. And the reason being is, is back to those points. And that's why they want the media to come down to, to explain. Because understand that as we are under contract um, and as they are under contract to start on a certain date, um, we don't want to start it if all the I's are dotted and all the T's are not crossed. So what may or may not happen is it may be delayed. Um, we have been in, in very deep discussions as of we can rush. Because, well, and I'll just be very blunt. Um, a process that should have took 30 days or more ended up taking about four or five months because of the federal slowdown. Mm -hmm. And so their application that went in for the recertification um, was delayed, not by anything that we did, not by anything that corporate uh, charter, they, all the documentation, everything is there to see, um, but because of the federal uh, government. And that's no, I mean, again, they were in a pinch and, and certainly understandable, um, but I don't want, I don't want to speak on, and that's why uh, uh, public charters is the one actually making the invitation to the media to come down to disclose everything. So they're, um, I don't want to speak on their behalf yet because they've got commitments that they've made to us. We're holding them to those commitments and to what the expectations are. Um, but they also need to speak on behalf of, of their company and then we will decide as a committee and as a city and as a board as up to what is acceptable. Um, so at the end of the day, commercial service is coming. Um, at the end of the day, it'll be a service that I think everybody will be proud of. Um, and uh, candidly speaking, at the end of the day, it's a service that very few people have across the country, and it's a brand new model that that you know that we had to overcome many, 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 many hurdles to get to. So I, I know at the end of the day, people are going to be extremely um, happy and proud of what their community has, and that's the main point. 
I just ask people to have patience, patience. <laughs> and to take a little time, but to know there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And a key point to understand, let me, let me make this last statement. A key point to understand is, is as a municipality and as a governmental agency, we are fully subject to open records and discussion. However, when we signed that contract, that was our discussion. That was our transparency, everything was out there. All the other components is in the hands of a private corporate. So they're not in public meetings every day. And that's where I think people have gotten somewhat antsy in those that are making these comments is that they don't, under, they don't understand it's two different facets now. Once we signed the contract, once we worked hard for two years getting the funding, getting the supports, creating the facility, uh, getting the different partners and signing the contract. That was our work. Once that was done, then it was handed over to a private business for them to work with the FAA, them to get the security plan, the luggage, all these different components. And those are not government entities. Those are private businesses. So therefore, they're not in public meetings. And therefore, the press isn't reporting on everything that's going on like they do with the city or the airport board or, um, or the county. So, um, and so I completely understand why people are somewhat antsy and they don't understand what the question is, but, um, or, or what, where, where everything is heading. Um, so what's happened is, is that we've asked the private companies to basically open up themselves to any and all questions to disclose anything that they currently have. Now, there might be a couple of contracts that they're working out that they might not be able to disclose because they're still in negotiation. But the intent is to be, you know, fully disclose what's going on and the importance of it. And, and but like I said, I think at the end of the day, I, I, I have the privilege of sitting on a conference call or sitting in, in a meeting, not a quorum meeting, but a meeting with this group. So I know for the most part where we're heading or where we're at, but there's still components of it that I don't know um, simply because that's their responsibility. So that's why we've invited the media down to let them see, feel, touch, hear, ask any question. Um, and I think that once they come back, then ev everything will be fully understood and people will be re-energized to understand what's happening. And that will be next week. Yes. Um, something else pretty exciting that uh, there's been some, some discussion about is uh, an interesting business that might like to <coughs> set up shop in Pikeville. Yeah. That is the uh, Hatfield and McCoy Brewing Com Brewery Company. Oh, yes. Now, we do know this is from West Virginia, but they're looking, uh, from what I understand, maybe at uh, coming over to this side of the river, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, we've pulled them out of the feuding uh, to, to, to the <laughs> Now we're all the really right going to get along. <laughs> well, they will still have a, a presence. In, they're in, currently located in Del Barton. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I, again, I know that this has been in somewhat in the public. Um, there's a lot of different things we're working on. The reason that I decided to, to uh, talk about this today, uh, or let me restate, the reason you asked me about this today was based <laughs> on some conversations that we had earlier. but. Um, this is a great story, you know, and first of all, Kentucky, um, one of the, uh, you know, we're known for three things and two of them I'll mention, but, uh, <laughs> you know, horses and, and, and uh, bourbon is, is obviously very well known and, and uh, throughout the nation and, and the world. And there's been a lot of uh, things in the media about the, the uh, Japanese and uh, the buying out the Kentucky bourbon, and, but it's well known. I mean, it's amazing how much uh, the bourbon industry, what the bourbon industry means to Kentucky. Um, but also part of the Bourbon Trail has become a tremendous tourism attraction, um, which is associated with, with uh, breweries in general. And uh, once we started looking into some of these things, uh, the history that Bourbon has in Pike County, um, there, was, there was a tremendous amount of history as well there too. I didn't realize there was actually breweries here mm -hmm. uh, years back. So, um, you know, I'm learning as I go as well. But um, they're obviously with the Hatfield and McCoy uh, history um, in the region, um, a great story. There was a, a gentleman, a Chad, uh, that lives in Del Barton, actually worked for a, um, a coal mining company, and I won't mention the name, because I'm not sure if he would want me to, but, um, and he was laid off because of the, the tragedy that's going on out there right now with, with the coal being under attack and people losing their jobs. But here's a guy that had a desire, a ambition, uh, a great process thought. Um, his, I think it's his grandmother was a, is, uh, it's, it's either his grand, yeah, I think it's either his grandmother or great grandmother. I'll, I'll get this wrong if I say, but it's tied directly to the Hatfield, uh, one, supposedly the uh, longest living 
uh, relative uh, living that's to Devil Ants. Uh, so, and they had the trademark of this name. Uh, people, I'm sure, have saw the, uh, the TV show with Moonshine. You know, they've been featured on, on that show, mm -hmm. um, along with the family. And uh, so, with all that, they've created a very successful business um, uh, over in Del Barton. Uh, they're manufacturing uh, moonshine. Uh, now, it's not the typical moonshine that you know. It's the legal moonshine. That, yeah, it's the legal moonshine. It's it's the same. You you know you have to be a brewmaster, handle have all your certifications. It's a very long and tedious process to get through. Um, and uh, he's doing a great job manufacturing about I think about 400 gallons a week. Uh, he's distributing in, in West Virginia, Kentucky, uh, or branching into Kentucky, um, looking at the Ohio market, Tennessee. Um, so he's um, he is partnered with the second largest distributor uh, in the nation. Um, so he's got a market that he a, a great model that's working, and he is looking at growing his product. But they have uh, created the Hap Ben McCoy brand, uh, Moonshine, um, as a brewery. So what? From a tourism attraction standpoint, I mean, one bringing those jobs to our community is great, and if if and we're working through those details, you know, the what they've got to do is to get their certification uh, and all their federal papers, to, you know, that they're mandated in order to be able to transfer and to do business in Kentucky. But um, they have um, are in the process of signing a letter of intent uh, to not relocate, but to locate another uh, distillery within our community. Uh, but there's more to it than just a distillery. You know, they'll d also do tours, uh, letting people come through and uh, see how they manufacture. Um, and, and again, that's part of what the Bourbon Trail has done for years. So, you know, it's a, a very small scale operation. They're currently, I think they're in about a 50 by 50 foot square foot building. Um, when you go to a lot of the breweries, and I'm sure a lot of people that have toured the Bourbon Trail, you know, you see these Ten and 20,000 square foot complexes versus something of this magnitude. So it's a much smaller scale, but you know, this is a guy that's got great vision, uh, that was a coal miner that created a model and a model that's working for him. He's a great guy, uh, got a lot of passion and a lot of great knowledge of business, and he's very, is somebody you really want to, you want to partner with. Well, and let me say too, though, we, we talk about the, the, the horrific things that have gone on with our miners and being laid off and, and the downturn in our economy because of those laid off uh, miners and it has forced a lot of people like with the SOAR summit that we had this is exactly what that SOAR summit exactly was about right. is knowing that things happen and that sometimes it's completely out of our control but what we do is and I think Governor Brashear said it best we pick ourselves up by the bootstraps and we go on and we find other ways Amen. to use our resources and to provide for our families and I think this is a perfect example of how someone has done just that. Well, it, it has, and, and the city's role is um, is is trying to attract those businesses into our market. Um, you know, we've got you know going back to what I talked about at our last show, um, and you're going to see more of this, Jill. Is that we've got several buildings that the city has uh, that could be utilized for job creation. So we're trying to play a role of trying again taking an asset that we have. And, and offer it in such a way that it could be an incubation type program, and that's what we did with the, the cafe, um, is to take a building and to offer uh, some incentives to start do a new startup, and then after a period of time, you start then paying a lease payment, but in that same time, you're creating jobs, you're creating tax base, and you're creating a new service. And that's what the, important, the, the importance of this is in, in, in business, and that's the, the field I came out of, is that if you create a coffee house downtown, then you're luring people downtown that's also going to, going to pass other, you know, whether it's a pizza place or an ice cream place, um, and they get exposure, they stop on the way, they'll get gas. It creates other service demands for people downtown along with better quality of life and it draws people into your market. So all these buildings that, you know, that the city owns that we're questioning and challenging, how can we get a better return on those businesses? Not that we have a lot of them, but we're hoping to spark some of that, that, again, interest because then once they get established, they can then grow into a bigger building. Um, is That's what an incubation program is. And there's been several models throughout the nation. They work, um, but you start them in a small facility at, at no rent, graduated rent, um, and then as they grow, they have need to grow into a bigger facility so that then they transition into, you know, another building. Um, so this is, what we're trying to accomplish. And this is just one example 
Um, I can tell you we're working on about two or three other um, businesses that we're offering, we're trying to use the same type of model uh, to try to spark new growth. And that's not on top of all the tourism initiatives that right. we talked about. The cafe you spoke about will be called Roasted. Yes. And uh, two business people in our community, they already own a successful business, James and Michelle Sword. I look for great things to come from that beautiful building, number one, and the fact that it's at the bottom of the 99, right there next to the university, just right there across from Main, you know, adjacent to Main Street, will be a great location and certainly look for wonderful things to come from that business. Now, as we move along, I mean, we've talked about tourism, we've talked about a lot of different um, projects. Um, Betty Tackett. We talked about Miss Betty last time we were here and her involvement. We are now having extended opportunities for her and with tourism and as you said Justin Prater is going to oversee the uh, tourism website but you Mike has agreed to host host that website and uh, let's talk a little just briefly about Miss Betty one more time and her involvement with the horse trail system and some other opportunities coming downtown. Sure. Well and, and I'll say this before I talk about Miss Betty is you mentioned U Pike. We've got a great relationship with U Pike. Um, they are taking on the project to to retool and, and the host and with Justin's background he's got some good understands the internet and, and, and website uh, language um, so you know we certainly appreciate we got uh, Bruce Parsons um, working on it and um, so I mean there, there, there is some um, great things that's going to happen with the website and, and we appreciate our relationship and what you Pike is doing to help our community um, but what's happened with Miss Betty is, as we mentioned, that you know she's taken over the horse trail uh, business. Uh, she'll have the horse barn up and operating tra uh, trail rides, um, uh, um, doing birthday parties with pony rides. I mean, uh, therapeutic riding. It's handicap accessible. Um, we've got um, so we we've expanded that a little bit. And what we're now extending our contract to is we. Uh, I can't remember we mentioned. I think we did. Um, but she has gone out and bought a, a carriage uh, that is a beautiful historical type carriage doing historical carriage rides mm -hmm. on weekends, especially uh, for downtown. So you'll be able to do a Hat Pinnell McCoy carriage ride or a historic carriage ride. Um, um, and then we're also working with them on the Hatfield and McCoy tour rides. Uh, currently the city has a bus. Uh, we host the, the, that bus. So instead of the city, the taxpayers paying for the gas and the insurance and the, and the personnel, um, we're working a deal with her to where she will be able to take that same driver that's driving the buggy and host buggy rides during part of the day and then trail, uh, the, the riding trails during the other part of the day. So it's a private investment versus public investment that will grow into, again, additional jobs, additional tax base. And somebody that's more suited to to look after the business and that's the one thing that to, to you know again just to highlight and to recognize is that when you bring you know and I am government so I'm talking kind of out of both sides of my mouth but again I came out of the private sector I spent 20 years working for in, in the corporate uh, corporate cor <laughs> I'll get it out in just a second corporate world thank you <laughs> the, uh, and, and that culture you know when you've got skin in the game you're more apt to want to really drive that business versus you know if it's governmental you've got a guaranteed subsidy and you may not work as hard uh, not that we didn't work hard that's not my point my point being is is that if you bring somebody like miss betty into the mix that's got a passion for the community and really wants something to, th to thrive then you've got somebody that's got skin in the game because they're the one putting the money up for the insurance and they've got to get a return on their investment as well so you know this is a great again a great partnership a great way to expand that business um, so things are really going well. We're really excited to get, and then we mentioned on the last uh, show, you know, expanding into the Expo Center with doing a horse show. So there's, you know, Miss Betty's going to be really busy. Uh, well, and I say we call her Miss Betty because I, I know her as Miss Betty Tackett. Uh, everybody know, here knows her, but it is Betty Tackett. Yes. We are thrilled beyond to have her as a part of our uh, city government group and people that are looking to to continuously prosper our region and bring new opportunities to downtown. One of the things that she will be able to do, and you mentioned the carriage rides on the weekends, especially um, Jenny Wally Theater, we heard earlier in our, our taping here that <laughs> work is being done at this moment, yes. and uh, we apologize for uh, the loud noise earlier, but it is growth and it is getting closer and closer. Looking for April 2014, somewhere thereabouts, uh, to getting that great venue up and going. Yeah, and. and you know, you can, people are now driving by and seeing the box come together. It makes such a difference when you, you know, you hear about it and then when you drive down Hambly and you look over at the red light there and you think, oh wow, that is going to be a big, beautiful building. 
it, it, they, there's a lot of work that's been going on that the public can't see because they've been re, uh, refurbishing the building. That's, we're, we're in the old Doll Hairs building now, but just a small portion of it. It's boxed off to where the theater actually has the majority of this building, and that's where the bathrooms, uh, the dressing areas, and all that is going to be. And then you'll have the actual theater itself, which is the box that they're building next door to it. Uh, so it's moving along. The uh, you know again, the public's going to be really thrilled with what's going on. You know, one of the things I'll mention, Jill, is that I've had um, just this week alone, I've had two major businesses in the market that that we're talking to that are tourism-related industries, and. Uh, one of the things that they were both sold on as of to why they're looking at our community was that because of what we're doing with the theater. So, you know, these initiative drives other initiatives. And um, uh, when you see the box is one thing, but, you know, I was able to show them the actual rendition drawing, you know, the, the watercolor rendition drawings. And so a lot of people are really excited. But, um, you know, this is going to be a, a state-of-the-art type facility. It's, it's really really, really nice. Uh, the inside is comfortable seating. Went through a lot of extras um, that uh, a lot of theaters you may not see. We have the, the deeper seats, the 36 inch I think it is. So you've actually got the knee room to where when somebody's going by you, you're not busting kneecaps um, with each other. So there's there's a lot of different amenities that's going to be as part of this theater. So, so I'm really excited to get this thing open. Again, our projected deadline is in April. Um, they're hoping to do the first production sometime in May. When I say hoping, I'm only saying it because I'm not Jenny Wall Drama Association. That's their decision, and I don't want to speak on their behalf. But they're looking yeah, at because we're doing two different things here. We have the building, and then we have the yeah. actors and actresses that are going to have to actually perform in the building. So there's two different levels there. But but we're hoping around April, somewhere thereabouts. Uh, absolutely, it should be completed. Um, you know, even in this poor weather that we've had, um, you know, it's, it's been tough. It's been very very tough for the building season, especially. But uh, things are going well. Uh, uh, and, 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 and again, just to highlight on that point that you just made, a lot of the initiatives that the city commission have, has sparked, you know, they've lit the fire, but then they stand back and let the professionals step in to make this thing work. So that's why you see Jenny Wiley, Betty Tackett, the, the, uh, Chad with the moonshine. These are, these are groups that are coming in that have business background instead of government doing it. Right. We're creating the venues and the support to get them to do it. So it's going to be an exciting time. We are going to talk um, extensively about some great opportunities coming to the Expo starting this weekend with Disney, but I do want to mention since we're talking about growth and weather and things kind of being shifted a little bit and how difficult it is when you deal with Mother Nature quickly, everything with the uh, Retail Development Center over uh, the Pikeville Commons is still working. If you've driven down uh, past there, you see that there are, it's not just footers now there's actually cement yeah, you, see, you see building <laughs> you see something so uh, quickly everything with everything that on track? is on track matter of fact i uh, just spoke with neil wilson uh, yesterday and uh, there uh, there was some permitting that they needed to get out of the way that uh, we appreciate uh, our good senator jones that uh, worked with them um, in frankfurt to uh, help navigate those waters so uh, you know again uh, many new services many new jobs a lot of different things coming that are going to really impact the quality of life and uh, for this area. Uh, again, a lot of these businesses that I'm talking to, uh, you know, the, the university has some exciting announcements hopefully coming up soon. The hospital's got, you know, they're getting ready to open up their new facility. We've got a retail ground out of the, uh, com major retail investment coming out of the ground. Um, so a lot of these businesses that are coming in, that's why they're getting energized and excited about. Um, so Neil is, again, just one more time for the public is, is that they're concentrating on the post office first because they need to get the post office relocated. So the first building that you see there that's coming out of the ground is the post office, but there is a lot of work. They've had the geotech people over there getting the foundations all shored up. Um, so you'll see a lot of different buildings going on and that's what the permitting process that was just released. So once they get the post office over, then you'll see the right hand side, which is where the post office currently is, that will go up quickly because that's all the big boxes. Yeah. Um, and again, I coming out of that retail field, working for Lowe's for as many years, you can put up a square uh, block building very, very quickly. They go very, very fast versus the left-hand side where the post office is, and that's why they started over there first, is the post office has to be more detailed, and the apartments above um, also are, is a whole different twist, and those take a lot of detail when you look at bathrooms and moldings and doors and all that. Uh, but actually, we just uh, uh, f signed off yesterday on the addresses for each one of the apartments that are being built. So things are far down the road. Everything is uh, looking great, and the uh, even though they've had one of the worst building 
seasons <laughs> that you can imagine. Without a doubt, in years. And they're a little behind because of that, but no, yeah, nothing too drastic. Yep. All right. Now let's talk about the Expo Center. Lots of great events. I know this past week we announced the Hillbilly Days concert. We will talk about that in just a moment. But this weekend, if you're watching today, this weekend we will have Disney Live. Mickey and Friends coming to the Expo. Two shows yes. on Sunday. That was February the 9th. Yep. Uh, great, great turnout for those. Uh, yesterday evening and coming up on the 12th, that's next Wednesday and Valentine's Day next Friday, will be the Night of Legends basketball tournament. This is, um, uh, you know, Kim May Downing, is, uh, who I went to sc uh, school with, great friend of mine, everybody you know, mm -hmm. knows her from the community and she had a great idea to work with um, the local schools in the area and to get some, reti what I'll call retired uh, it's a nice way to put it. <laughs> sports, those of us that are beyond the years of high school that really want to participate in a, in a tournament, uh, to bring them in and create a, a legends type tournament. So names that you've, that you, we, we've grown up with or we've known that's been great basketball players from various schools and to create a, a legends tournament. So it was a great idea where that uh, will benefit um, all the school systems. Um, so that is going on. So if you get the opportunity to come out to support it, I uh, suggest you do so. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, very familiar faces playing in some of those ball games. Of course, you Pike uh, men's and women's basketball still going on in the Expo Center. Of course, Kelly Wells doing just a fabulous job. We always want to make sure that you get out and wear your orange and black and support the U Pike Amen. Bears. Uh, we talked about this a few months ago, how we were bringing new and different things to the Expo Center monster trucks. Yeehaw. <laughs> March 14th and 16th will be there. And then on the 20th, that's a busy week, Hunter Hayes uh, going to be at the Expo Center along with Daniel Bradbury, who was just right. here with a little guy named Brad Paisley. I know him from somewhere. Yeah, I mean, really. <laughs> so there's that one. And then, of course, April 10th, a couple weeks before Hillbilly Days, we have Billy Currington along with Brett Eldridge and Chase Rice. And now... Hillbilly Day's concert has finally been unleashed, if finally, you will, this it's week. It's hard to keep it. And it's a group that some people, a lot of people know about them, but a lot of people don't, but they've heard their songs. Old Crow Medicine yes. Show, along with special guest Marty Stewart. Now, Marty Stewart is not the headliner. No. It's Old Crow Medicine Show, and he is their guest. That is going to be a fun concert. It's going to be a great time. And, I, you know, I love the Marty Party. Um, I mean, it's a great, <laughs> it's going back a few years. But Are you going to wear a jacket like he I, wears, I, maybe, in the bolo? Um, I don't think I'll go that route. Oh, you need route, to. But I, I think everybody should dress we'll, up we'll like Marty Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what a perfect concert, though, for Hillbilly yes. Days. And, of course, you know, it's it's our huge, long, it's it's almost like a week-long event, but, you know, gets underway. That will be Saturday night of Hillbilly Days. Of course, the dates this year are April 24th through the 26th. That's a little different than we're used to. It was pushed yeah. back a week. A little so, bit later. Uh, it, it, so hopefully the weather will be even nicer. Even better. More <laughs> crowds. Expected a record crowd again this year. Now, next week, uh, that will be on Wednesday the 12th. Of February City Day and Night in Frankfurt. Yeah, that is uh, an annual event that uh, the Kentucky League of Cities uh, puts on uh, that uh, we attend. And you know, one of the reasons that um, it's so important is is it's time uh, for municipalities together to go down and talk to our legislators to talk about things that are important to cities. Um, and so it, uh, you know, we have the opportunity of of going uh, to the Capitol first and meeting with the legislators, and then. Uh, s uh, initiatives that are important. The KLC will have their battle cry is what I will call it. And then uh, the executive uh, board, which I'm on, uh, we meet uh, to cover uh, any uh, KLC business and then to talk about legislative issues. And then that evening, um, mayors and, and city managers and commissioners and city council members from around the state all get together at a uh, at a banquet um, just to kind of talk about things that are going on. So it's a it's a great opportunity during the session for us to get, stay connected with with things that are important. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I, I, I'm not only on the executive committee for the Kentucky League of Cities, um, I'm also on the uh, the full board, which is the legislative board. So. You know, the city of Pikeville has a great voice, um, I'm, that I'm great, uh, but has a great <laughs> voice. I guess I, that, that sounded somewhat con conceited, I guess. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll back down a little bit. They have a voice. Uh, they have a loud mouth, I guess is the easiest way to, to put it, because I'm very vocal and when it comes and very passionate to my community. And, and so anytime there's legislation that impacts us, um, I've got a front row seat and, and, and trying to champion the, the uh, need for our, our community. Uh, great I'm not. Uh, uh, no, you are. You did a fantastic job. Uh, now, the first week of March, you're going to be in the National League of Cities and, in D.C. Well, and the same thing is, again, just um, letting the folks know how 
the government is working is that the same thing happens on a national level in Washington. Um, I, for the last 10 years, I've attended that conference. Uh, we'll be in, um, in meeting with cities uh, across the entire nation um, in D.C. Um, usually about three to 4,000 uh, different city managers, mayors, council members, commissioners show up. And we talk about initiatives um, that relate to cities and municipalities on a national level. And then again, we meet, uh, we meet with our congressmen or our senators and, and uh, then we go to the Capitol and, and the things that are important on a national level, uh, we address those items as well. So um, really a great time of the year for us because again, it, we get to figure out and find out what's happening um, from their standpoint and they get to listen to what's our opinions from our standpoint, but uh, great events looking forward to and that's just that time of the year. It is that time of the year. We've covered a lot today. Let me do say this. If you need any information on any other events that we've done, if it's an expo event, Expo Center's website is fantastic. All of the ticket information, of course, is there. Anything going on with the city? What's the website? Uh, well, two places, uh, www.visitpikeville.com or the city's website, www.cityofpikeville.com. If you have any problem remembering either one of those, just go to Google, type in City of Pikeville, and both we'll, of those will we'll come up. We'll pop up. up. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right there at the top of the list. Donovan, always great to be with you. Wonderful information. And I know in a couple of weeks when we do this again, there'll be even more things to talk about. Well, I'm, I'm, again, Jill, I'm really excited. I think that uh, some of these announcements, and I, I, I'm on the edge of my seat really hoping that they all come to play uh, because these are some big names, some big, some big things, and really could hope you know change the landscape if they all come to play. Always exciting. I'm excited, Donovan. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. This has been the Pikeville City Manager's Report. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.